Hello everyone, welcome to Gautam Digital Learning. I'm your trainer, Musab Sayed, and today we are going to talk about how to launch an instance on AWS Cloud. Normally, when I talk about an instance, it is nothing but a virtual computer that you're creating on cloud. Like normally you have a desktop or a laptop in that you will install operating system and you use it. The same way on cloud, we create a virtual machine in which there will be an operating system and we can use it. Instead of using our on-premise data center, it's very cheap and very economical to work with cloud and launching the instance. And as we have created a free tier account, we'll get lots of opportunity to work with free resources. So what are we waiting for? Let's go and start working and launching a Linux based instance. So first of all, you have to log in into your AWS account and choose the region in which you want to work. Like in my case, I'm using Hyderabad region. Now, if any region is not available for you, you can simply go to manage regions and in manage regions, you can enable a region. But let me tell you that whenever you enable a region, at least you have to wait for two hours so that the region is completely active. So when we go to down, here you see regions are available and it is telling whether it is disabled or it is enabled. Suppose I want an Hong Kong region. So select it, go to enable and this is going to enable the region but this region is only going to be available after a couple of hours. So if you don't find Hyderabad in your list, simply go to manage regions and enable it. Now here you see there is an option inside it called instances. See instances are actually nothing but virtual machine. As you can see, I already have some instances created for my classes, but for you, I'm going to start a fresh launching of instance. See here, we don't call it creating an instance. Here we call launching an instance. Different terminologies are there. So what are we waiting? Let's go to launch instance. Now, as soon as you say launch instance, a wizard will be available. One after the other, you have to give answers and it will create that machine for you. So I'll call, first of all, it is asking me to give some name to my instance. Let me call it my Linux machine, whatever. Now, as you know, Linux is a free operating system and it has so many flavors or versions. So if you go below, it asks you which Linux would you like to use? There is a huge list. You have Amazon Linux, you have Ubuntu Linux, Window Linux, Red Hat, sorry, not Linux, Windows, my bad, Red Hat, SUSE, Debian, and Debian. Of course, Windows is also using the Bash shell, so it can also be termed as a little bit of part of Linux, but actually Windows is a wonderful different thing. Anyway, so which Linux you want to choose? See, AWS has its own Linux, which is exactly same like Red Hat. So I would like to work with Amazon Linux. Now make sure whenever you are working, you are observing free tier eligible. If something is not showing free tier, then billings are going to be done and we will get a huge billings for that. So if you are not interested to pay any bills, always check for free tier and go for it. So I'm going for a free Linux operating system. Then it is asking you to select instance type. Now basically instance type is nothing but how much CPU, how much RAM you want. So here also I request you to always look for free tier eligibility. If you don't go for free tier eligibility, the billings will be there. So in my case, I'm going with T3 micro. See in Hyderabad region, you get T3 micro. Whereas in other region, T2 micro, which is free. So make sure that you are selecting anything that is showing free tier compatibility. So in this, I'll be getting two CPU, one GB RAM. Maybe you need more. So go to this list and you can select any other which is giving you more CPU and more RAM as per your requirement. I don't want it to incur any bills to me. I'll continue with the 
free tier. Then the next thing it is asking you to select a key pair. See guys, AWS is a very, very secure environment and it does not want your privacy to be leaked out. So what they do, they maintain something called key pairs, like you have a lock. Now lock can open only with the key isn't it? They does not work with simple passwords, especially in Linux. They don't entertain you to type password. If password is leak, anybody can use and connect it. So here to get connected to your Linux or Windows machine, they give you something called keys. So these keys you have to download, store it with your system. And whenever you are connecting to any Linux or Windows machine, these keys are going to help you to achieve your password or to log in into Linux machine. So I don't have a key. So what I'll do, let me create a new key pair. So let's click on creating a new key pair, give it some name. For example, I'm going to call it online, right? Anything you like, select RSA and select dot PEM. Let me say create a key pair. Now you see a key has been downloaded. Keep this key safe with you because this is what we are going to use for our future classes. Now, next thing, firewall. See, firewall is also very, very important. To connect to my Linux machines, I need firewall to be configured properly. For Linux, I need to allow some important service that allow me connectivity. For Windows, I need to allow some other service. So as we are working with Linux, please allow SSH. Don't disturb it. Now, 8 GB of hard disk it is giving. That's fine for me. Now, I'll say launch instance and there you go. Your first Linux instance or virtual machine is now launched. Now, as soon as it is launched, you see the status is going to change into running. So running means the state is up, the machine is up. If you don't want to use it, you can right click and you can stop it. Stop means shut down. Or maybe you have planned that you are never going to use it again. You can also terminate. And also you can reboot your machine if required. Anyway, it's running and I want to connect to it. How can I connect? See, they provide public IP. Public IP is an internet based IP using which from my laptop I can connect to my instance which is running on AWS's environment. So what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to take this public IP and connect to it. Now for this we have to do certain more tasks over here. First thing you can use some tools to connect like there is a tool called Putty. So please download Putty software for connectivity. See many people use different tools to connect. I prefer going with Putty. It's a free software. Go to Putty website and download it. See 64 bit x86. This you have to download. Now as soon as you download, you know how to install anything on Windows. Simply you got to say next, 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 next and your putty will get installed. Now, as soon as it is installed, it looks like this. If you search putty and open, this is the way the putty software is going to look like. Now to connect to my Linux machine, I will copy the public IP, go to putty tool and paste it. The moment I say open, it will give me a warning and connect. But the problem over here is, I don't know the password how to connect. See. In normal Linuxes, the default user to connect is EC2-user. This is the default user for connecting to your SUSE machine, your AWS machine, Red Hat machine, etc. Debian also. But if you are working with Ubuntu, you have to give Ubuntu user. The problem is when I type the username and hit enter, it will not allow me to connect without key. You remember we have downloaded the key. Now it's the time to use that key. See, a little complicated procedure is there to connect to your Linux machine. And I'll show you one simple procedure also afterwards. See, first of all, to connect from Putty, you need to convert that key into usable format. So I'll go to a software called Putty Gen. 
The moment you install Putty, Putty Gen is also going to get installed. So click on Putty Gen. There is an option load the key. So click on load the key. Go to that location where you have downloaded the key. Like in my case, it might get downloaded in download folder. So let us go to download folder, maybe in programs or something or documents or something. Or let me check it out where it has downloaded the key. If I open the folder, okay, it's available over here. Now it is available in .pem format. So what I'll do, I'll go to download and over here, let me go to download where it is missing. Let me just check it out. Okay, here it is. Or let me check it out, exact the path where it is showing. It's in user git download. I don't know why it's taken so complicated path. So let's go to C drive. In C drive, users, git and download. Here, I'll go for all files. The moment I say all files, you see I have found online.pem. So just use it and say save private key. That's it. Now your file will get saved. What name you want to call it? I'm going to call it online. Just say save. Now if you go to download folders, as you can see, online file is available. How to use it? Go to the putty tool, put the IP address, go to SSH. In SSH, there is authentication. In authentication, there is credential. Now in credential, browse that key what you have converted. Go to downloads and here you can see online. Just use it for connectivity. See, if you want, you can change the colors. You can also increase, decrease the font size. That would be very nice. So maybe I'll use the bolder points and 18 points, something like that to use it perfectly. Now I'll say open and you see the screen is available. I'll type EC2 hyphen user and there you go. You got connected to your Linux machine. Now, if you don't like such a lengthy procedure, then there is an easy procedure also. We call EC2 connect. So right click on your machine. There is an option connect. And how would you like to connect? Give the user name and say connect. The moment you say connect, it is going to open another tab and here it is going to connect. So if you don't want to use that putty terminal and all that thing, simply by using this concept also, you can connect to your Linux machine. So this is it for today's session. In next video, we will learn how to set up a Windows machine. Thank you very much. See you soon.